Okay, so this is Workplace and Apprenticeship uh, 20 math. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just review the concepts in the course as you study for your final exam. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask, but I'm just going to run over this real quick. So in Chapter 1, we talked about slope and rates of change. Now the slope, right, the symbol for slope is M, and it's rise divided by run. So between any two points... You take the difference in the rise, or the difference in the y values, divided by the difference in the run, or the x values. So it's the same as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay? And so that gives you your slope. So that was um, 1.1, we talked about that. Grade, angle of elevation, and distance. So an angle of elevation always start, starts from the horizontal and goes up. So it's an elevation. So think about elevator goes up, right? Uh, grade. Now, uh, grade for 1.2, and I'll just kind of uh, flip back to 1.2 here. And um, so let's see, where, where was grade? Okay, slope and the tangent ratio. I did actually make some, uh, make some notes here on where I wanted to kind of show you some important things that I can find. Oh, here's grade, okay? So grade is the slope of a physical feature expressed as a percentage. So right here, percent grade is rise over run times 100. So that's what grade is. And if you see something like this right here, a 7% grade, okay, if you divide that by 100, that's the actual slope. Okay, so that is, um, that is grade. Okay. Uh, rate of change. So in chapter 3 we finished off with rate of change. If you have a graph and it is the amount of money on this side and the amount of time on this side, then the rate of change would be the money or the dollars per time. So if you're calculating um, how much someone makes in an hour, the slope would be how much total money they make divided by how much time they've been working. So a slope is also interpreted as a rate of change. And one example would be, you know, dollars per hour. That's your wage that you would work at work. Okay. Uh, chapter 2, broken line graphs. Okay. So if we have uh, points like this, data points like this, and if you connect each point with a straight line, then that's a broken line graph. Okay. Broken would be, no, broken would be this is a straight line and it's been broken, it's like been bent. So it's, it's a kind of a broken line graph, think of it that way. A bar graph is a bit different. A, a bar graph is where we have bars that are separate like this. So if we just had numbers of things, like if this was types of animals and the numbers of the animals in the shelter or something, that would be a bar graph. A histogram. Histogram is very similar, except a histogram would be where the bars are all connected. Okay, where the bars are connected, that's like a histogram. And that better represents data points that <coughs> are connected. So you could take a broken line graph and make a histogram out of it by doing this sort of thing. And you could, all the bars would be connected there, right? Something like that. And then circle graphs, we also called them pie charts, which was wildly uh, popular last time we did this, this class. But if you take a circle and you split it up into sections, each section would represent a piece of a whole. So let's say you had something that was uh, you know, uh, exactly 25%. Well, you would take 25% of this circle, and that would be the section that represents you know, uh, anything that represents 25% of the whole. So let's say we talked about people in this class and how many people you know, uh, drove themselves to school and exactly one quarter of you drove yourselves to school, then this one quarter or 25% of the circle would represent the number of people that drove themselves to school this morning. All right, and that's chapter two. Chapter three, surface area, volume, and capacity. Okay, so surface area is literally the area of all of the faces of a figure, right? So this area plus this area plus this area, plus you know the back side, the other side, and the bottom. So you'd have six faces for some kind of rectangular prism or cube. Um, when we talk about pyramids, a pyramid has some kind of rectangular bottom or a square bottom, and each 
uh, each point on that base converges to a point on the top, right? So that's what a uh, that's what a pyramid looks like. A cylinder is a circular prism, so it has a circle on the top and the bottom. A sphere is just a three-dimensional circle, so it's like a ball. And a cone is uh, has a circle for a bottom, and then it it's like a circular pyramid, is what it is. That's a cone. It's a circular pyramid. Volumes and capacities, you'll have to look at each one of these lessons, 3.3, 3.4, to talk about when we talk about the different formulas and things like that. But volume is how much space it, it, uh, it takes up, right? How much space uh, uh, or how much uh, capacity would be uh, the volume of liquid that would go inside that shape. And uh, volume is usually in uh, a length that's cubed. That would be like a volume. Capacity would be something like uh, liters, right? So it's like the volume of liquid that could in fit inside there. So you'll have to kind of look into that, um, study those lessons again if you need to. So that's chapter number three. So let's move on to chapter number four. We talked about trigonometry and right uh, triangles, right? So if we're talking about right triangles, then um, let me move that over a bit for you. Uh, so um, solving for angles, lengths, and distances, the big thing you want to remember is SOHCAHTOA. Okay? When we're talking about right triangles, uh, SOHCAHTOA talks about sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. That's how you remember those trig functions, sine, cosine, and tan. And of course, we also remember Pythagorean theorem, for a right triangle, we have A, we have B, and if the hypotenuse, the longest side is C, then the relationship there is A squared plus what? B squared equals C squared. Very good. Okay. And then 4.2 is just some applications, so that's some word problems. You might want to refresh yourself, watch that lesson, uh, take a look in your workbook and study some of that again. We moved on to Chapter 5 from there, scale representations. So scale models would be... Um, if you had, uh, you know, something like this, and you had the exact same shape, but it was either larger or smaller, okay, then that would be either a, 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 an enlargement, if you're going from small to large, or it would be a reduction, if you're going from large to small, okay. And scale factors uh, is always, what is it, object um object size or length of a course uh, side to the, um, uh, the object over image, image over object. Scale is um, the model or the representation <coughs> over the original, right? The original's on the bottom. So if we were going from, oh, let's use this one. The one is, this one is smaller, so the model length here is the, for corresponding sides would be smaller than the original, so this would be a scale that's less than one, right? Um, like maybe like point that looks like about point three. So that's your scale factor. It's going from large to small. So model size or the representation divided by original size. Uh, Two-dimensional representations, three-dimensional representations. Again, uh, look at scale drawings and models scale factor, um, all of those things in chapter 5 you want to review. Uh, the last two chapters that we took were financial services, so this was the one where you looked at bank accounts, choosing a bank account. What's the difference between simple and compound interest? There's two different formulas you're going to want to review there, um, right? Simple interest is adding the same amount each year, it's a percentage of your original. Compound interest is um, finding a percentage each year of each new balance. So if you start off with a thousand bucks, you have a certain amount of interest. The next year you calculate uh, your interest based on the new value, not the, uh, not the original one. Simple always goes back to the original one. Compound always uses the, the latest value. So compound, simple goes like this, a nice linear compound does this. Kind of keeps growing more exponentially that, okay? So compound interest makes you more money, but also costs you more if, you're, if you've lent some, uh, if you've borrowed some money. Uh, we talked about credit cards and store promotions. Okay, so just refresh your memory on uh, credit cards and how they work. That's compound interest there. Sometimes with store promotions, you've got to be careful to examine whether you're getting uh, a certain rebate 
or if you're using a card, you know, 10% of your purchase, depending on the size of your purchase, uh, might be a better deal to do some kind of store promotion that way. And then personal loans, uh, again, what's a line of credit, overdrafts, that sort of stuff in 6.4. So without going into great detail here, uh, that's just a summary of what you need to take a look at. If any of these don't look familiar to you, I would suggest you looking at back at the video lessons or talking to myself or one of your, uh, uh, one of your classmates before your final. And then finally, this <laughs> chapter you just came through, personal budgets. So making a personal uh, budget, uh, talking about the budgeting process and analyzing a budget. So you just, you just came through that. So I won't talk too much about, about that. But budgeting and knowing the aspects of a budget um, are really important. Okay. Do any of you have any questions about the exam coming up or about what to study? Okay, so remember if you're looking up on my channel, Mr. Mathwell, look up WA20 and then the section number, whatever it is, 7.1 or 2.5 or whatever it is. Uh, this is what you can search. And uh, if you put a Mathwell in front of it or behind it, then you'll get your actual lessons that I've, uh, I've taught. So Mathwell, WA space 20 and then the section number. You'll be able to look up any of these uh, lessons. Okay? All right.